What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS4 tutorial slash overview. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the new PS4 Explorer app version 2.0 by Lappy. Now the previous PS4 Explorer app is by far the most popular homebrew app on the PS4 at the moment. It's got the most downloads in the homebrew store and many, many other downloads on third party links. So the new version here has a bunch of additional features. We'll be taking a look at the new features in version 2.0 and we'll also take a look at some other hidden features that were also present in the previous version that many people might not know about and uh, just to really showcase, you know, the capabilities of this app. So that's what we're going to take a look at here in this video. So first of all, if you don't already have PS4 Explorer version 2.0 downloaded, then there's a couple of different ways you can get it. You can of course use the homebrew store and on the homebrew store you just want to go down to store groups and select that option and then go down to utility and then if you scroll up in utility you should find ps4 explorer version 2.0 you can just hit download and that will download it directly to the ps4 okay and once it's downloaded you can then hit install which will then install the downloaded version and there we go it is complete without errors if we go back here you can see that we now have ps4 explorer version 2.0 installed and we can now close out of the homebrew store. So if you want to download it on the computer, just head to package-zone.com in your web browser and then search for PS4. And then you should find PS4 Explorer version 2.0. Just hit download to download it directly to your computer. Then from there, we can then put it onto a USB drive and just copy the package file to the root of a USB and then eject that drive and plug it into the PS4. And then of course, once you're on the PS4, you just head to settings, you go to gold hen, you go to package installer, and then you just select the package file to install it directly to the PS4. So once you have PS4 Explorer version 2.0 installed, we can now run it and take a look at some of the new features that are built in. Okay, so when you first open it, the first thing you'll notice is that there are two options now. You can either go for root access or sandboxed. Now, if you select sandbox, that's only going to give you access to a very limited amount of the file system. So you definitely want to go with root access in almost all cases to get access to the full file system here. So taking a look at some of the new options, first of all, you'll notice that it goes for a more dark theme. So I guess if you prefer a light theme, you might want to go back to the original version. Maybe there'll be an option to switch it at some point where you can toggle dark mode and light mode on and off. But one thing you'll notice is the USB icons in the bottom right hand corner. That shows if you have a USB storage device that's been detected. There's two for the two USB ports in the front of the PS4. So as you can see, I have one storage device connected, which is my USB drive. And then the other one is grayed out with a little X to show that that USB port is not taken up with a storage device right now. So taking a look at some of the options, if we hit the options button, instead of taking us into the help section, which is what the older version did, which gives you access to, you know, all of the different button combinations to actually use this file explorer, because that is essentially what PS4 Explorer is. If you've never heard of it before, if you've never used it before, it's essentially like Windows Explorer for your PS4 so that you can access the file system uh, properly compared to on the PS4, which only gives you access normally to like your apps and your screenshots, save game data, that kind of stuff and trophies. That's pretty much all you can really access on the PS4 normally. But with PS4 Explorer, you can access the entire, entire file system, copy and paste files, move files around, open files, install packages and many other things as well. So if we hit options, we now have the ability to adjust borders. Now, this was not possible in the previous version. And what's good about this is that in certain resolutions, on certain screen sizes, some of the app can be cut off on your screen. So having the ability to adjust the borders like this can help fix that so that you don't have to worry about that issue anymore. You can also change the temperature from um, Celsius to freedom units. So, you know, if you want, if you want it displayed like that, then you can. Um, I'll stick with uh, normal temperature. And then from there, we can then look at some of the other options. So you can also press left and right on the D-pad and that will switch you between the USB devices that you have connected to the PS4. So here we have my USB stick right here. So if you press triangle, this will give you the options for the particular file or folder that you've selected. Now you can select multiple files by hitting R1. So R1 will allow you to multi-select. So then when you press triangle, any action you do here, like you know, cut, copy or pasting any files that will apply to all of the files that you have selected. And of course, you can press R1 again on, a, on the files to deselect them or you can press L1 to deselect all. 
So if you press triangle, there are a few new options here. We've always had the ability to create a new folder or a new file, or maybe it was just a new folder before, but you can create a new file as well. You can cut, copy and paste files from one location to another. You can rename files and folders. You can delete files and folders. And of course, we also have the option here to go to properties, which will give you the properties of the particular file that you've selected. So if you select a folder, it'll tell you how many files and subfolders are inside that folder, as well as the overall size of everything that's in the folder or file. So 63.6 megabytes in this case. So that's a new option. Another new option is the ability to send to. You know, you can quickly send a file to one of the USB drives or to the data folder on the hard drive instead of having to select the file, copy it or cut it, and then navigate to the location where you want to paste it in and then paste it into that location. So it's just a quicker way of being able to send files to the most common directories that you're typically going to send files to on the PS4. So that's another handy option that has been added. So furthermore, if you hit the right stick, that will take you back to the root directory. That's the home directory. So another option that's been added in the new version is that if you hit the L2 button and triangle at the same time, so if you press both buttons down at the same time, it will give you access to the advanced options. Now there was this option in the older version as well, but there are more advanced options in the new version. One of those advanced options is the ability to perform a search. So you can search for a particular file or folder. For example, we can search for uh, RetroArch, and then that's going to search for all the occurrences of RetroArch here in the file system. So you can see there it found over 100 elements. And if we have a look, we can go to RetroArch. We'll just take us straight there. And there's the folder there in the data folder. So if you're looking, if you don't know where something is, but you know the general name of it, then you can search for the name and find that location. So if we head into assets, we can go to places like, you know, package, text files. You can open text files. You can also open XML files. You can open JSON files. You can also open sound files. Again, these were options in the previous version as well. Um, but for example, when you play a sound file now, so bgm.wav, it now shows a little symbol showing that the audio is playing. And then you can hit square to stop the audio from playing. So there you go. You've got options there to play and pause music files. It doesn't seem to support MP3 files, just WAV files and OGG and maybe FLK or FLV or FLK. So also it supports video files as well. So you can play video. Again, this was also an option in the previous version. However, it now shows the little icon next to the speaker to show if there's sound playing or not. And uh, yeah, it's got like this nice border around it, which it didn't have before. You can just press circle to cancel that. So another new option that's been added if we head back into the advanced settings with uh, L2 and triangle at the same time, we can go down to installed packages and this will show you all of the apps that you currently have installed on your PS4. So it gives you all of that there. And these are all the apps that are installed to the internal hard drive, but you can also press triangle to switch to any packages that you might have installed to an external drive. So you can see what packages you have installed. So these are kind of the main changes that have been made in the new version that the old version didn't really have. It's things like the search feature, the icons, uh, when playing audio and when you've got your USB drives plugged in, uh, things like the send to and the properties option. And those are kind of like the main changes, as well as the ability to open some other file formats that you weren't able to open before. For example, things like um, data files, you can open data files and you know, data files, depending on what type of data file it is, it might have some readable text in there, it might not. So if it does have any readable text, it will try and uh, show that text there. Uh, as you can see, in this case, there's no readable text in that one, but there is some readable text PNG in that one. Um, but of course, you can edit text files, as I said before, and JSON files, XML files, and various other things, config files, INI files, uh, SFO files as well. And also image files like PNG files, JPEG files, DDS files can all be opened. You can edit all of those and open them in PS4 Explorer. So the other big thing, of course, is package files, which again, we're now getting into things that the previous version could do as well. Uh, so we have package files. So for, so for example, you can select a package file. And in the previous version, it was X to install the package file. Whereas with this one, it is L2 plus X. And that's because some people, I think, sometimes held down the X button for too long when selecting a package and it would just go to install it immediately. 
uh, whereas they might just be wanting to open the package file to see what type of package file it is or get the information from the SFO file, which is displayed here, like app type, app version, attributes, content ID, all of that stuff and didn't want to accidentally install it. So to prevent that from happening, it's now a combination of L2 plus X to install the package file. So you hold down L2 and press X, and then that will install the package. Now, another thing that quite a few people don't know is that you can also install package files from the hard drive as well. Now, it was, it was thought originally that you could only install package files from a USB drive on PS4 Explorer, but that is not true. It's just the fact that you can't install package files from the data folder which is the most common location uh, that people put files on to put them on the hard drive is they put them in the data folder. A lot of homebrew apps use the data folder to store temporary files and settings files, config files and stuff. It's all stored in data. So a lot of people try and copy package files to data and install them with PS4 Explorer and it doesn't work. But you, there are other locations you can use to put package files on and install them from the hard drive and they will work. One of those locations is the user folder. So if you go into the user folder and you put any package files on the user folder, then you can indeed install them to the PS4. You can also enable an FTP server by hitting the left stick and that will activate an FTP server running within PS4 Explorer. So if you wanted to install a package file to the hard drive, you can use something like FileZilla or WinSCP like an FTP client of some kind, you just punch in the IP address that shows up in PS4 Explorer for FTP and the port number, which is 21. And then you can quick connect and access the file system remotely from your computer. And then if you want to install a package file to the hard drive, you can just go into the user folder. You could even create a new folder here in the user folder called like packages or something, PKGS. So I'll create a packages folder here and go in that folder and then I'll take our homebrew app like this uh, log me in Hamachi app and drag that in so I've copied that over directly to the hard drive and then of course if we switch back over again to the PS4 we can then go back out and back into that folder and you can see we now have that packages directory and there's the package file that we copied over from the computer over the network and we can select it and we can install it by hitting L2 plus X and there we go, it gets added to downloads. And then it should say that it is ready to use. And that works. So we have successfully installed that app right there over the network. So that's another way that you can also install package files directly to the hard drive over your network connection instead of using USB. That is possible through PS4 Explorer, which I think a fair amount of people didn't really know about. Also, another thing you can do is you can download files directly from a URL. So to do this, you hit L2 plus triangle at the same time, and then you go to download URL. In the older version, it was just hitting triangle on a particular location, and then there would be the download URL option. So you go into the directory you want to download the file to, and you select download URL. And then if you have a link to a file, you can enter it in here and it will download it directly to your PS4. So this is good if you have like a home server or something that you keep all of your package files on, and you can just download directly from that or like a NAS or something. And you can just enter the address and download whatever package file. So I've set up a basic server on my computer that's hosting uh, Orbis FTP. So you just enter the URL, the address of the package file or whatever file it is you want to download. It doesn't have to be a package file. And we can select done. And as you can see, it downloads it there directly to the PS4. And then if I select it, you can see it has successfully downloaded the package from my computer that was hosted on a home server. And then I can hit L2 plus X and install that directly to my PS4 as well. So again, very powerful application here for installing packages. Again, you can copy them over FTP. You can download them directly via URL or download any files directly over URL. You got all those different options. So as you can see, Orbis FTP has also been installed. Another useful tip is that you can change the home directory. So by default, when I click the right stick, it goes back to the root directory which is a pretty good place to have your home directory. But if you're using this to install packages from the hard drive, for example, like we just set up, where I created a packages folder in the user folder, then what I can do is I can hit uh, L2 plus triangle again, and then I can set this directory to the home directory just like that. So now whenever I hit R3, it's gonna take me back to this directory. So I can be in some other directory doing something else, and then I want, maybe I've copied a file over via FTP to the packages directory and I want to install it. Then I can just hit the right stick and then it will take me back to the package directory where I can install my apps. 
So yeah, quite a lot of different options there. And I'm sure there's plenty of other things I missed. There's probably lots of other file types that you can potentially open now that you weren't able to open back in the previous version. And last but not least, of course, if you hit L2 and triangle again, you also have the ability to activate FTP from here, but also get full read and write access because by default, PS4 Explorer will not give you full read and write permissions. And this is just to protect you to stop you from deleting any critical files that are going to break the hard drive and stop it from working on the PS4, uh, you know, break some critical operating system file. So in order to protect you, that's disabled by default. But if you want the full read and write access because there's some file that you want to replace that requires read and write access, but you know it's not a critical file, like an icon or something, then you can, of course, uh, enable this to get full read and write access. So that's another option there as well. It was also available in the previous version. There's also the companion apps for PS4 Explorer, like the Avatar Maker, uh, where you can basically create an avatar file that PS4 Explorer recognizes and can install, which will allow you to change your, you know, your background picture, your profile picture on the PS4 itself. And then, you, of course, you also have a bunch of language packs that you can install so that you can get PS4 Explorer in your native language. So, yeah, lots of different options there. Lappy is absolutely killing it with the PS4 Homebrew. And he has been for a long time, so hopefully he never stops. So awesome stuff here. So hope you guys enjoyed it or found the information useful. Check out all the links will be in the video description. And I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.